If you're a music producer and you're struggling with the keyboards, do this every single day. It's really going to improve your skills over time. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel, and I want to make a quick video today about keyboard practice, especially for music producers or people that are self-taught or learning how to use the keyboards for their music productions. It's something that comes up a lot with my own students because it's very overwhelming to learn the keyboards on your own, and sometimes people just ask me, what can I do every single day, something really compartmentalized and small to make myself better? And here it is. Okay, so even though this might sound like a very beginner concept, let's just start with the major scale. For those of you that don't know, just a string of notes going up one octave. You can do this on a smaller MIDI keyboard if you have one at home. And I'm just going to build a chord from each note of this scale. So stack on two extra notes. Notice I always have a gap in the middle of those notes. And we just glide on the way up. So I've taken that major scale and played it in chords. Now, if you're a total beginner, you can start right here, and this is great to do. And even if you're an intermediate player, there's a lot of things you can take with this that you may not have considered. For instance, trying different voicings. And voicings is where we get into a lot of the other things you can do with a chord. Instead of playing it like this with my left hand, I might add my right hand in on the E and bring that note up here, sort of a split triad. And now we actually have a different way of voicing a chord. And you can write this down too if you want. What I tend to do is write LH for left hand 1, 5, based on the intervals I'm playing, the root and the fifth. Right hand 3, based on the third up top. You know, technically that might be called a tenth, but I'm just going to call it a third. And then I'm going to do the same exact thing that I did before. I'm just going to go up. And down. Now again, even if you're an intermediate, this is another great place to practice with different scales, different keys, really testing your knowledge on the keyboard. And I like this for improvisation too, because if I was to take a chord progression, for instance, like let's say this is the one chord based off the one note in the scale, and we go up to one, two, three, four, the four chord right here, and then four, five, six, up to the six chord here, maybe back down to the four chord. I can have a progression that sounds really nice. And I can take that as sort of a canvas for improvising onto, letting my right hand kind of move around and connect the dots of those voicings. So basically I'm just adding in notes, but still following that system of the voicings that I established earlier. And you get this really nice sound. And the reason why I'm stressing this is because a lot of music producers at home uh, start writing melodies on the computer. They use the computer mouse, they type things, or they uh, click things in, right? And so you kind of build this relationship to writing melodies in a very computer oriented way. Um, and this is a more tactile way because I'm letting my hands feel where the melody should go. And I'm just using thirds as my target notes for each chord, right? So up here is the third, up here is the third of that chord, up here is the minor third of that chord. And that guides me. What's awesome about this too is you can take it so many different directions. So let's say I want to build arpeggiations. Instead of writing them in with the keyboard mouse, I can play them. So we can build this arpeggiation in a really simple way, similar to what we did in the prior example. So let's say I take a perfect fifth down below. This is my left hand. My right hand, I'm gonna take the third, but I'm also gonna add on the seventh. Um, I love the seventh. It just adds such a nice lush sound to every chord, really. And just so you know, when it goes blue, that's I'm holding down the sustain pedal. That's all that means. And I'm gonna do the same exact thing with the other chords. So we have this right here, and we have this right here, and we can come back down. So this is really nice. Um, 
when you build an arpeggiation, it helps to have some distance between the voices or the keys and the way you play that chord because then it won't sound maybe as dense if you play more in a, in a busier way. Actually, let me not, I'm not gonna hold down the sustain pedal so you can see everything. So what am I doing there? I'm just taking a pattern, playing it with my hands, letting the fingers kind of dance around a rhythm that feels natural to me, and you can experiment. I snuck in a little um, resolution. That's the leading tone. It really wants to go to the octave, right? So, or the double octave. But another thing you can just kind of experiment with. You can do so much with this. It's amazing. And your arpeggiations will sound really, really cool. Uh, play around with them with different intervals up top. So I could do maybe, let's say, right hand three and five. You know what I love about this is just picking out an idea, following the right hand, left hand system I talked about earlier, just experimenting, thinking what is something new I can try today. You might find it just always inspires something new to record and produce. And uh, what is it doing? It's getting you playing the keyboards, having fun every single day, and you're getting better. You're learning how to arpeggiate, play around with a different scale, try this on another key, whatever you want to do, whatever your goals are, you can pick a lane and progress with it. And you'll probably find yourself distracted all the time wanting to make more music with your hands. So hopefully you guys found this interesting. Uh, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe if you want more like this. And yeah, I'll see you on the next video. Have fun making music.